Greater Bowie Chamber of Commerce presents the Bowie Business Journal, a program designed to keep our community informed about important business and economic issues. Welcome to Bowie Business Journal. I'm Cindy Freeland, host and co-producer. Today we have a very interesting show about nonprofits, and I have two very exciting guests, Lori Beatty. Welcome, Lori. Hi, thank you. Thank you for joining us. And Debbie Langdon, thank you for joining us, oh. Debbie. Thank you for having me. Lori, can you explain to us what your organization is, what the, the name of the organization and what it does for, um, sure. in, here in Bowie? I work for the National Capital Radio and Television Museum, which is at the corner of Mount, Oda, Mount Oak Avenue and Mitchellville Road. And it's a, a museum with old radios and old television sets and programs and um, all that kind of thing that you'd expect to see with radios and televisions. Wow, that sounds great. It's lots of fun. I it have really been is. in there a couple of times. Yes. And it is wonderful. I'll have to get back in there and look into it more. Yes. Um, Debbie, can you introduce your organization and tell us a little bit about it? Uh, yes. Um, I'm the director of the Bowie Interfaith Pantry and Emergency Aid Fund. We provide a variety of services. We are primarily a food pantry, and we serve all qualifying residents of Prince George's County. Um, in terms of food, we distribute mostly dry and canned goods, but we also have made um, a concerted effort the last couple of years to provide fresh produce to our families, um, as well as another source of protein, for example, eggs or yogurt or cheese. Um, we also administer an emergency aid fund, and that is limited to residents of the city of Bowie. Um, that is meant as a one-time help for families who are experiencing a crisis situation. Um, and primarily, we help with rent, mortgage, uh, utilities, water bills. Uh, we also provide a referral service. If people come to us, you know, and, and they're in need of, of um, quite, a, uh, quite a lot of different things. For example, clothing, furniture. Um, they might need to go, know where to go for additional medical assistance. Um, you know, where to get eyeglasses for their children, things like that. So we do try to provide them with um, um, information about those resources and where they can go to get additional help. Mm -hmm. I am familiar with the Bowie Food Pantry, but I didn't realize that they helped with the electric bills. Yes. That's wonderful. Yes. Mm -hmm. How, did you have a lot of activity during the, um, the Frankenstorm uh, the past couple weeks? Um, we've actually been very busy. Um, October was a very busy month for us. Um, in September, we registered 25 new families. In October, we registered 42 new families. Wow, that's a um, lot. And just on Monday, for example, we registered another seven families. Um, and I'm in the process of working with about six financial assistance requests right now. So uh -huh. it's a very busy time. Hmm. Lori, what, how long have you been working with the museum? I started in June of last year, so okay. it's just over a year. OK, and what do you like best about working there? Because it's a small intimate museum uh, with I'm the only paid staff member there and so I get to do a little bit of everything whether it's um, taking out the garbage or doing strategic planning I, I it runs the gamut for me so mm -hmm. I get to do everything and I think that's what I like best about it. Oh good okay and what about you Debbie how long have you been with the food pantry and what do you like best? Um, I've been with the food pantry for a little over two years now um, and I'd have to say it's the people that I've met along the way um, the volunteers that are there are just a, a very dedicated and compassionate group of people. We have about 50 volunteers that work at the food pantry. And like Lori, I'm the only um, paid um, employee, and that's a part-time position. Everyone is volunteer. And many of them have been with the pantry for over 20 years, so they bring a lot of experience. Um, and also the people that we meet, the people who come to us for help, um, they are, I learn something from them every day. Um, and then also the people, the community itself, um, who donates to the pantry. Um, and it's, it's very nice to be a part of something where we can bring all those pieces together, the volunteers, the people who need help, and the people who are offering help and bring them together um, to really help one another. Mm -hmm. Wow, 50 
50 volunteers. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Yeah, some of them are, are work in the pantry um, in the mornings. Um, others are out shopping for us when our shelves are low. Mm -hmm. um, others uh, are doing pickups for us at local um, grocery stores, um, restaurants, um, businesses. So it, it takes quite a, <laughs> quite a lot of people to keep it um, running. Wow, well, I guess so. I guess so. Um, do you have a lot of donations? Do you get quite a few donations? We do. The, the community um, at large is, has been absolutely wonderful. Um, we um, get to have a lot of people doing food drives for us, you know, schools, businesses, um, nonprofit groups, um, individuals. So we get a lot of food donations in, we get a lot of monetary donations in, and that then allows us to go and shop when our shelves are low. Mm -hmm. so what about gift cards? You get some gift cards We do too? get gift cards as well, yes. Good. That's mm -hmm. great. And we do more than just food. Um, in addition to the food we provide, we also provide household items, um, such as laundry detergent, dishwashing detergent. We also offer personal care items. Um, and oh, I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. So, <laughs> Sorry um, what about diapers and baby yes, items? Yes, we do provide um, baby items as well. So mm -hmm. we do have diapers um, and formula and baby food. We also have a, a small area of pet food as well because okay. people often have pets and they ask, "Do you have anything for our cat or our dog?" Yeah. So, so we provide that as well. Yeah. Do you get any donations from Bowie Claw by any chance? We actually work with Bowie Claw. Okay. Um, they. Um, if we have families who have a dog or a cat, um, they ask us to refer them um, to Bowie Claw, and we do that. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes people come to us and they're out that day, so they're looking for some, some food um, for, their, for their pet at that moment. But mm -hmm. we do um, refer everyone to Bowie Claw who has, who has pets. Mm -hmm. I used to be a member of Bowie Claw, oh, um, their event chair, uh, for the first year that they were mm -hmm. open. And that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed doing that and helping mm -hmm. them out. But um, for... Uh, for the benefit of the show, I'd like to, sh like to share a little bit of knowledge mm -hmm. that I just picked up this, a this morning before we came in here. Mm -hmm. um, online, I found that there are 1.5 million nonprofit organizations in the United States. Wow. And that doesn't include the smaller ones, which didn't have to register because they make less than 25000 a year. Mm -hmm. So there are, there are much, many more mm -hmm. uh, than the 1.5 million uh, mm -hmm. nonprofits. And a nonprofit, um, is, to me, means that uh, it can be a 501c3 mm -hmm. or another organization, mm -hmm. which is a nonprofit which would uh, collect donations, um, in your case, Debbie, food mm -hmm. and cards, uh, gift cards for, mm -hmm. for food. And um, Lori, in your case, um, donations, monetary donations, and um, items such as the CB uh, microphone here that I have here, and, um, and other things that you'll be showing a little right. bit later. Mm -hmm. But they also help teach the public what they offer and the reasons why mm -hmm. the public needs to help. The educational component is really important to the, to the nonprofit mm -hmm. definition. Now, do you, Lori, do you have any classes or anything that you offer in your, at your location? Not yet. Um, it's something that I was asked to work on when they hired me last year. Mm -hmm. And right now, anyone who comes to the museum is offered a tour. And we have, I was thinking you were talking about volunteers. Mm -hmm. We have a really large volunteer corps that we'd like to expand. We have about 20 dedicated people right now, mm -hmm. about half of whom are there to give tours on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when we're open. The other half do radio repairs for our membership. Mm -hmm. And um, so right now it's a tour opportunity. But we also have partnered with the local library branch in Bowie on Route 450 to host occasional lectures. We just had one on the Cuban Missile Crisis where we had the historian from NSA with someone on our uh, board who is a, an authority in communications and how President Kennedy used the media to move his message forward during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And we're also working on some K through 6 programming right now and we hope to have that in place in time for the summer mm -hmm. of next year. That's wonderful. Thank mm -hmm. you. What about you, Debbie? Do you have any <coughs> classes or events coming up? Um, we don't have any classes per se, but 
But I, I would say that you know, you know, we're educating the public on an ongoing basis. Um, you know, people come to us and they just don't realize what the need is out there. Um, and I have to say, I, gr I grew up in Bowie. Um, we moved here when I was four years old. And the pantry was around then. And I had no idea, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I grew up here and I went to schools here and I had no idea that there were people, you know, I in my neighborhood who were hungry. So that in itself, we were really educating the public in that way. And, you know, a lot of sometimes students come to us and they're looking for service hours and they're just amazed. I mean, they had no idea that, you know, perhaps the person who's sitting next to them in the classroom, you know, is going home to a pantry that's empty. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just hard to imagine that that's happening um, today. Um, so, and, and so those students then go out and do food drives for us. Um, uh, there's a, a young lady who has her own um, business and she donates uh, some of that to the pantry so mm -hmm. that we can go out and purchase needed food. So I, I, I would say it's an ongoing educational experience for people, for young and old alike. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have some events coming up. This is a very busy time of year for us. Um, we get a lot of donations in during November and December, and we are, are most grateful for those. Um, the Scouting Food Drive, for example, is this Saturday, and that will bring in a lot of uh, needed food um, and hopefully we'll be able to fill our shelves and keep them stocked for a couple of months through this particular food drive. But then other you know, schools and organizations, individuals are, are holding food drives for us right now as well. Um, and that will keep us going probably through January, February. You know, but then again in March the shelves are emptying out. So um, the need for food is, is year round. Mm -hmm. you know, not, uh, you know, we appreciate everything certainly at the holiday time, but, but it's, a, it's a year round need within our community. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, you mentioned the teenagers mm -hmm. and the, 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 the service hours. Mm -hmm. And I know that when my kids were in high school, mm -hmm. I had a hard time finding organizations that would take mm -hmm. them. So it's good to know that they can mm -hmm. call the Bowie Food Pantry and mm -hmm. get service hours. And what about you, Lori? Do you offer that too? Not yet. We have okay. such a small space right now. There's hardly room for me and our volunteer executive <laughs> director. <laughs> and so we, it's something on our list once we figure out a better space where we can have mm -hmm. students needing, who are interested in, in perhaps pursuing a, a career in museums uh, mm -hmm. or education. But right now, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, do, Lori, do you have a favorite piece or favorite item in the museum? Actually, I do. It's really funny. When you asked me what, what was it, uh, we actually have a radio upstairs in the 1930s room. That we're, we're arranged chronologically. Mm -hmm. And it's, only, it's a small white radio, about this big. And on top of it is a sticker that says, on this radio, I heard about the um, attack at Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. And one wow. of the things that we like to do in museums is have stories. It's not just coming in to look at objects, which, of course, we want people to do. Mm -hmm. But it's the stories that those objects can convey to mm -hmm. the people who are looking at them. And that has always had meaning to me, that this radio actually helped this man, a man, the man who owned it, mm -hmm. um, know what happened in Hawaii, which wasn't even a state at that time. Wow, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Yeah. That's, 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 that's a story. I love stories. Yeah, yeah. and so we're <laughs> always looking for stories. When people mm -hmm. bring things in as a donation, uh, we always say, well, did you use it or did your grandparents use it? And do you have any stories that you can remember about it or favorite cool. shows or programs that you listened to or watched on this particular piece of equipment? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Debbie, do you have a story that you can share with, um, I know it's um, confidential, a lot of what you do, mm -hmm. uh, but do you, can you share a story, a, a favorite story that, of <coughs> anything at the food pantry? It's, well, uh, there are, are many stories. Um, uh, I think more a compilation of those stories. You know, I'm seeing more and more younger people who are coming in and saying, you know, instead of, um, and this actually happened last year, um, a, a student came in and, and they said, you know, I have everything I need for the holidays. I don't need any, any, any more things for Christmas. Um, so I would, so they went out and bought um, toys and gifts for some of our children. Um, and that's something else that we do um, at Christmas time. We provide um, toys. Mm -hmm. And we have the moms and dads come through a, what we refer to as a toy room. And they pick out an item or two for their children. Um, and, and, and just to see people who are willing, who recognize that they have that they have what they need and that others 
have nothing mm -hmm. um, and for them to spend that and especially for a student a child to do that you know someone who's 12 or 13 um, to be that aware and and to rather than you know have another toy for themselves or gift for themselves or iPod or whatever it is instead to turn around and spend that money on someone else is really extraordinary it is so. that's wonderful mm -hmm. it's wonderful Lori, do you, are you a Bowie Chamber member by any chance? We are. As part of our strategic planning process, we felt it was very important for the community, especially the business community, to know more about who we were and what we did. Mm -hmm. Because one of the standard things I get is when I say I work at the National Capital Radio and Television Museum in Bowie, I get, really? There's a museum in Bowie? <laughs> and I say there are five museums in Bowie. Or, oh, I drive by that place every day and I've always meant to stop in. And so as a result of being in the chamber, we just joined last year. Uh, we've made really wonderful contacts in the, in the business community. And it's beginning to help us rethink how our board is uh, formulated, who's on the board, mm -hmm. and also who we might be able to have sponsor some programs that we're working on. OK, great, wonderful. Yeah. Um, Debbie, what about you? How long have you been with the chamber? Um, we've been with the chamber since 2006. Mm -hmm. um, we actually became a nonprofit um, in 2004. Mm -hmm. um, before that, the pantry had been in existence. It's been in existence in some form or another for about 50 years. Um, I believe it started out with people just giving out groceries wow. um, on the location at the location. So um, we became a nonprofit in 2004. Um, a 501c3, as you were mentioning mm -hmm. before. Um, and that, too, allows us, when donations come in, it allows us to provide tax receipts, donation receipts um, to individuals for the food or the monetary donation. So we joined the chamber in 2006. Um, and that has been a wonderful working relationship. Mm -hmm. um, one of the programs that we've tried to push um, through the years is an Adopt-a-Shelf program and the Bowie Chamber of Commerce has adopted our peanut butter shelf. Oh. Um, and peanut butter is one of those items. It's one of the staples, of course, in all of our pantries. And it's something that we give all of our families. Mm -hmm. So every family that comes in either gets a jar of peanut butter or a jar of jelly. Mm -hmm. um, so we go through lots and lots of peanut butter, mm -hmm. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of jars <laughs> of, of peanut butter a month. So we were very grateful to the chamber for adopting that. And at all of their events, they're collecting peanut butter for us. So. OK. Well, thank you. Um, speaking of peanut butter, we do have some mm -hmm. peanut butter over here. We I've do. brought in um, a jar mm -hmm. um, myself as a donation and thank some you. some hot chocolate, mm -hmm. boxes of hot chocolate. So thank you're welcome you. to take those thank with you, you when you, you go. <laughs> and Lori, I do have um, something to give you, too. I can't <laughs> let you be le leave you out. Um, I have this um, microphone. And, and I've also read online that this is uh, nicknamed a lollipop mm -hmm. and oh. uh, for good, like reason, yeah, for good yeah. reason it does look <laughs> like a lollipop but this is a um a cb um microphone i believe mm -hmm. and um so that is yours for the museum so and much. i also have some information that i printed out about oh, it great. as Thank well you. so you're welcome to Thank take you. that with you so speaking of the museum yes do you have anything that you want to show us today well we were talking about programs that we're working on and we're very excited that um, in doing some research on the city of Bowie we've learned that almost a third of the population is under the age of 18. Mm. And so one of the programs that we're working on, as I mentioned before, is K-6 through programming. And we want the kids to be thinking about sounds when you listen to the radio, what kind of sounds might you have to help get the story in your mm -hmm. mind and you can picture in your mind what's happening. And I mentioned to you earlier today, and we're going to laugh because it is a museum, and yes, we do wear white gloves <laughs> and we <laughs> handle things. And we laugh, like, um, you're touching the microphone with bare hands, and I'll touch the, well, it's OK, but Sorry. I'll touch the <laughs> microphone with gloves on. But um, when you come to the museum, one of the things that, that you can learn about is that um, stations, broadcast networks, had their own um, sounds, so that if you had the radio on or your television on and you weren't in the room, you'd know what was happening. Mm -hmm. And um, I mentioned to you this morning, NBC chimes, and you didn't seem to know what they were, but I'll play them for you. Yes. And you probably yeah. have heard that at I some have. point in time. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. Um, so we have a, a room that's um, very interactive for children and also adults because, you know, we all like to play with things. Mm -hmm. So I brought that just as an example. And something else kids, and this is a prop so we, I can take my gloves <laughs> off, but that's actually an artifact. Um, mm. Just coconut shells. Oh. Mm. 
be a horse. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Very good. And so for the summer camp that we're developing that we hope will be in effect for next summer, and I hadn't mentioned that yet, but mm -hmm. we have both tours and a summer camp under development, mm -hmm. we're hoping that we'll uh, to play a radio program that was made for kids maybe 50 or 60 years ago and then have the kids work together to write their own radio show. So mm -hmm. we're hoping that they'll be able to <laughs> use all these kinds of sound effects in, in the program that they pr mm -hmm. put together. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's um, really exciting. I, I read that um, that in, in punching somebody in a, in a movie or in a show or mm -hmm. maybe even on a radio show, um, that the sound, a lot of time, somebody's punching like a, a turkey or something, mm -hmm. like a chicken. Have oh, you ever yeah. heard that before? No, but it makes <laughs> sense because it's that meat that yes, you hear. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, similar to your face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what else do you have to show us? Um, well, that's pretty much it. I mean, I brought another sound effect. Um, it's just a piece of sheet metal. Mm -hmm. But when you yeah. wave it, oh, you get yeah. thunder cool. and lightning. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So that would good. help somebody understand when mm -hmm. there's a rainstorm. Oh. We have over 200 records, not just physical things that you can make noise with, but we have a, a series of records that have different kinds of train whistles mm -hmm. and cha trains approaching a station or leaving a mm -hmm. station and car horns and trucks. and I mean, it's just amazing the industry and the business around sound effects for, for radio. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping to get those digitized at some point so the kids can mm -hmm. use them when they write their, oh, their shows. Oh, very exciting, very yeah. exciting. So the that's everything I brought from the museum today. The chime mm -hmm. that you uh, you played for us mm -hmm. um, a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. that kind of reminds me of the movie Grease. Remember mm -hmm. in the in the beginning of the school day, ding, ding, mm -hmm. ding, they, they, it's oh, like the morning an announcement. announcement. Right, uh -huh. morning announcement. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I remember the morning <laughs> Yes, yeah, yes, yes. And it's the same kind of thing. At, at the Metropolitan Opera, there's a man who goes through the lobby at, at the break playing chimes to let you know that mm -hmm. the break is over and to go back to your seat. So mm -hmm. it's a very common mm -hmm. element, I think, in getting attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Very good. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. You're welcome. And then you also have a, um, a hobby business that you're working <laughs> on now. What well, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I think being working in a museum is really creative. I mean, you're always thinking about exhibits and how do you have the public understand sometimes very complex concepts such as radio waves, and we're not going to go into that today. But um, on the there's another way to. I'm really interested in another way of out, uh, an outlet for my creativity. And so my mom said, "Why don't you pick up?" jewelry design. And I said, hmm. really? Jewelry design? Are you kidding me? She said, I think you'd be really good at it. And so that was about three years ago. And I have gone from being a hobby to being a business um, at craft and um, arts and craft shows. Mm -hmm. And so I designed jewelry. And do you want me to, I brought something yes, to show yes, you. Yes, please show us. Um, mm -hmm. What's been really fun is as I've been working on this, I've begun to get commissions. And I actually had almost almost 10 commissions this year. This is, these are actually pearls. Oh, really? Yeah, they're called Kishi oh, wow. pearls, and they've been dyed. And this is mm. a commission that I just finished actually this week. Um, and then I made my necklace. I, you know when you're in business, you always have to sell what you're selling. So mm -hmm. I. Mm -hmm. Can I see? Oh, sure. The necklace. So it's very it, pretty. Um, they're amethyst. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Different kinds of amethyst so, and earrings. valley so sterling beautiful. in my earrings. Yeah, mm -hmm. very pretty. So it's it's a different way to to be creative, mm -hmm. and um, I've been moderately successful at it. So I That's think great. I'll keep That's great. keep going. Now yeah. the company name is the Bead Wings. The Bead Wings. The Bead Bead Wings, mm -hmm. like a bird. Okay. Now yeah, we don't have you. that information at the end no. of the in the credits, mm -hmm, but right. we do have uh, for the folks um, at home. We have all the credits at, at, sure. at mm -hmm. the end of the show sure. um, to reach Debbie mm -hmm. and to reach L you, Lori. Mm -hmm. So um, feel free to contact either of them yeah. um, <coughs> about the food pantry mm -hmm. and about the museum right. and of course about mm -hmm. the bead wings. Yeah. So, um, but Debbie, do you have anything else that you'd like to add about the about the food pantry? Yes, um, I'd like to welcome people to come and visit the food pantry. We are only open three mornings a week. We're open Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings, and we do open up one night a month. We found that some of our families were, the parents were getting back to work, so, but they still need a little help with food, so we wanted to give them, you know, offer them a time that was convenient for them after work. So mm -hmm. um, people are welcome to come during that time, and if I'm free, I, I, I would certainly give them a tour. If those hours aren't convenient, I'm, I'm happy to meet people up at the pantry and show them around. Um, we basically work out of three rooms. Uh, one room is where our, our, our clients come in and fill out paperwork, and we have 
our produce selections for them and, and bread and dessert items. We have one room where we store the bulk of the food, um, and it's a very organized um, shelving system that we have. <laughs> um, and then we have one room where we, we refer to, as our sort as, to it as our sorting room, where mm -hmm. all the food that comes in, we go through and we check the dates we, because we don't want to give out anything that's expired. So we, we check all those dates there before it goes on the shelf. So <coughs> I'd be happy to, to show um, the pantry to anyone who is interested. Mm -hmm. We also um, last year started a newsletter. Um, and that's available online, or if people want to email us, um, I can put them on our distribution list for the newsletter. But we really thought it was important to let the community know on a monthly basis what was going on at the pantry and what our particular needs were that are at that time. Um, and just to give them, you know, an idea of, of, of what we're doing and how the donations are being distributed and, and, and things like that. So. Now, do you, are you looking for more um, people, higher, uh, a, a lot more people now for, because of the holidays? Are you, are you, do you, you usually see a lot more activity, right? We do, and we do special things at the holidays, too. Um, for Thanksgiving, um, we're working with several different groups to provide Thanksgiving meals to our families. Mm -hmm. So some will be coming to the pantry to pick up. Um, items to make their Thanksgiving dinner and also a turkey. Um, others are having that meal delivered to them and then others are going to a place and having a prepared meal. So we have a lot of things going on for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And then at Christmas time we also give out a Christmas basket so that the families can can make a meal at Christmas time and we offer them a turkey or a ham or a chicken. Um, so all donations for that um, you know, will be gratefully accepted, mm -hmm. accepted, and we put information about that in our latest newsletter so people can see what kinds of items we put into the baskets. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to join the chamber or to join the newsletter, they would contact you, Debbie? Right, through, the, through our email. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they could get on your mailing list. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, um, Lori, do you have a mailing list as well? We do, and we also have a membership program. So okay. if people wanted to support the museum that way, and as we develop programs, receive dif discounts. But right now, yes, we do have a mailing list, mm -hmm. so they could ask me to be on it. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, do either of you have anything else to, that you would like to add um, that you would like for every the, our listener listeners to to know? Come about? Come to the museum. <laughs> we're here. For, we're here for Bowie, and I think it's once you've been there, you realize that it is a gem in the city, and uh, we really hope that people will consider coming back and bring their kids mm -hmm. and, and visitors. To Bowie. Mm -hmm. Well, I know I've been in there once mm -hmm. through a, um, a chamber mm -hmm. event, right. and it is packed with information, yeah. packed with articles, um, artifacts, and it just has so much yeah. information. Yeah. And um, so I, um, I, I, I want to encourage our listeners to uh, to go out and go to the uh, National Capital Radio and Television Museum in Bowie right. um, with Lori Beatty, and mm -hmm. thank you for coming. We're going to have to wrap up now. Um, Debbie Langdon mm -hmm. with the Bowie Interface Pan Interfaith Pantry and Emergency Aid Fund. Mm -hmm. Wow, <laughs> those are long, <laughs> long, yes, long we do, we do. organization <laughs> names. We do. Yes, I'm sorry we if do. I no, messed them okay. up. Um, so Debbie, mm -hmm. thank you very much for that information, and hopefully we'll have some donors donations come out to you. Um, thank you. And thank you for for joining mm -hmm. us today. Thank you. And um, please watch for our uh, the the credits at the end of the show if you'd like to contact any of us. And we thank you for listening. I'm Cindy Freeland, Bowie Business Journal. <laughs>